way I kind of uh, paint this gel. And it's, the reason you do water gelding is water gelding is <coughs> a form of gelding that you can burnish. So you can really polish the gold up so it's mirror-like. Uh, when you use modern gelding, or when you gild with varnishes, uh, you can't polish that gold up. It just lays there the way it's been put down. So you have no um, plate to change the surface. Um, the method I'm going to show you today, you can burn, so it's very much like water gel, which is really easy to cold. All right? You can buy gold in two different forms. You can buy it in surface or patent gold. Surface gold is what I have here. Patent gold is gold that's adhered to sheets, so it's a little easier to handle. This is beaten gold is so thin that you can actually see through it. You can actually see right, right through it. It's, it's, what you need to do is you take a gilding brush, you rub it, you get the oils on your skin, and this is the way you handle the color leaf. So in water gilding, you wet the panel, and you touch it, and the capillary action of the water grabs the gold, holds it, and spreads it out over the surface of your, um, of your painting. You know, you would go nuts if you were trying to, um, to pick it up and try to hold it with your hands. So I'm going to show you an easy way to handle the gold without using the gilder's brush. Um, the gold. Um, and that's by taking a piece of wax paper. And the wax paper has a, uh, a waxy surface. So it's going to be conducive to this. Kind of wax paper, lightly with a little bit of gold. Okay. And then stick to the wax paper. But it's a real tentative bond. It's not going to stay there too long. It's going to, it's going to transfer to anything that's, that's more sticky. And it can hold it like this. Patent gold is already adhered to um, those sheets of tissue paper. You can take brisket paper that they sell for um, hair brushing. Or you can take a little bit of very thin acetate, real super thin acetate, and spray it with a little um, spray adhesive. And cut out the forms that you want to gild. So what I have to do is put the bowl down. The bowl is Armenian um, clay. Red clay from generally from Armenia. It's really beautiful clay. Uh, and you mix it with high glue, fish glue, and bowl. Just the moisture from your breath will make it sticky so that I can put the bowl into it. And that's what I want to do. I want to get a surface that gets tacky. The first application you really want to thin down. And you want a soft brush. This is my glazing brush. Um, Generally, at home, I use sable brushes to, to put this on. You want to get it as brush stroke free as possible. Because every little flaw, every little brush stroke, every little cut in the gesso um, will be amplified by the gold. The gold is really reflective, so it's really going to show off the surface. And the reason for doing this is twofold. One is it's going to keep this area clean when I gild. The other, area, the other reason for doing it is if I have to go around the forms like this, there's a much better chance that I'm going to get a buildup around the edge of that form. Okay, and right now, because I have my brisket down, I don't have to worry about um, carefully going around my objects. And, all right, what you want to do, you want to leave this sit until it's totally dry. And then you want to give it another coat at almost full strength, just a little water in it, just so you can brush it out. You want to dissolve, to, or excuse me, dilute it until it brushes smoothly. Um, but you don't want to put as much water in as we did the first one. Okay? When that dries, <coughs> bless you. When that dries, you're going to do it again. And when that dries, you're going to do it one more time. So you want to give it somewhere between four or five coats. You want to get evenly covered. Um, it's dry. Over here, 
underneath, um, I just blob a little bit of gesso to make some pastilla. Okay, pastilla is the buildup that you see, the beautiful buildup of, of um, forms and patterns on the surface of gilded paintings. Um, the next thing I want to do is apply my gold, and it's going to be the moisture from my breath that's going to um, lift it, it's going to reconstitute the high glue, make it tacky, and I'm going to lay my, my gold into that uh, tacky surface. <laughs> We could do many layers. Now today is a really dry day. On a dry day, the way to assist this process, you know, if it was a good moist rainy day, that would have laid down perfectly smooth. I'm going to go and gild the whole thing, I'm going to give it another coat, and I'm, I can give it three layers if I want to. So I'm eventually going to get it all on top of this. Overlapping by maybe a sixteenth of an inch. When you're finished, You lift off your frisket paper and you, know, you get a good edge. Okay, this is a good time to burnish. It's got to be dry enough so it doesn't scratch, but not dry so that the, um, the gesso underneath is rock hot, rock hard again. And when you burnish, what you're actually doing is you're smoothing out the clay underneath and polishing that surface. And then the gold follows along with what the clay is doing. Now, this is, this is too early to the burnish. I should, I should leave this for 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, but I'm gonna push it, it's gonna scratch it a little bit. And when you burnish, you really wanna watch your burnisher so it's not picking up gold. Okay, once in a while some gold will stick and the gold will scratch itself. So, you're starting to scratch. How hard are you pressing? I'm pressing pretty hard. And when you burnish, what you want to do is go over the whole surface. Because as it dries, it becomes less brilliant. So what I said is that optimum time to burnish, you know, after it's dried totally, um, it becomes less brilliant. So if I'm, I'm working on a big panel and I start up in this corner and I don't do it even, and it takes me six hours to get across the panel, by the time I get to the lower right hand corner, the surface is going to be different than where I started. So what I do is I start lightly over the whole surface and come back, cross hatch, go a little bit darker over the surface. This is a small surface, so I'm going to I want you to take a look, okay? I want you to, I'm going to pass this around. Put your finger over here, and put your finger over here, and look at the difference between the surface that's burnished and the surface that's not burnished. 